Fortunately, I have a friend who is a full member of the Russian Academy of Science, Professor Alexander Konopalov. Immediately, I wrote to him that I see such a, such and such thing, some write-up from your Academy of Science. But I know that you are working for the last 10 years on homeopathy, on digestion of homeopathy, and I have got several correspondences with him. So he replied within two, three days that the highest body of the Russian Academy of Science, the general body, does not approve this right. The chief executive person also does not support this. And Professor Konovalov definitely does not support it. So, from time to time, we will find some person shouting homeopathy in this singular In my opinion, many of those persons, they, they are stuck up with this Avogadra number. That there may be something beyond Avogadra concept. Some conceptual breakthrough may be there. And I will, my talk will be centered on that. I welcome you all to my lecture on this topic, nanoparticles of homeopathy, their possible identities. Nanoparticles, as we are seeing, listening from this morning, is a very exciting topic for present day research for their varying properties and wide variety of applications, including use as medicines. They are usually particles between 1 and 100 nanometers in size, but are not restricted to that, sometimes the size may be even higher. It is emerging to influence homeo research in a big way, as is evident from the deliberations of the previous speakers. In a homeopathic solution, diluted even beyond the Avogadro limit of 12 potency in centesimal scale, nanoparticles are detected by techniques like dynamic light scattering, atomic force microscopy. Professor Papianongi has a number of publications along with her team on this nanoparticles found in homeopathic solutions. And to add to this, I must say that this Professor Konovala, he has experimented with more than 100 chemicals diluted through different stages. He went up to 10 to the power minus 20 concentration. And the theory on which I am going to talk is based on this person's work. He is a renowned physicist, Italian physicist, you guys. Now, as per Professor Konovalo, he made these dilutions and he found that up to this, say, 10 to the power minus 4 concentration or 10 to the power 4 dilution, you have classical molecular edges. Increase the dilution further, you arrive at supramolecular domains. And you go further on the dilution scale, you get nanoparticles. Now, nanoparticle also, as you are listening, is also a controversial term. What is the nature of these nanoparticles? Nanoparticles are intermediate between bulk materials and atomic or molecular structures. In a certain amount of solute, the number of the nanoparticles will be less than the number of atoms or molecules in it, obviously. So in the process of serial dilution of homeopathy, they will cease to exist even before we reach 12 potency in the center signal scale, that is 12 C. So, Chemically, these super diluted substances must be just H2O. Chemically, they cannot be anything else.
Now these nanoparticles are being used in medicine, but the treatment by conventional nanoparticles is not same as treatment by nanoparticles, better to call them as nano-associates of homeopathy. This nano-associate terms, the Russians, they always use this term nano-associate, they do not call nanoparticles. When you exceed this dilution beyond uh, Avogadro limits, because beyond that, you cannot have particles of the starting material. What you have, experimentally, it is detected that you have nanoparticles. Scientific investigations with dynamic light scattering or atomic force microscope or transmission electron, electron microscope, they reveal that you have the structures in the solution of homeopathy. In homeopathic solutions, potenta is beyond over the limit 30, 200. Uh, in my uh, experimentation, I experimented with even 1,000 potency. So we accept the presence of these things, but I do not call them as nanoparticles. It is better to call them nano associates because chemically they are just water molecules, structured water molecules. Now conventional nanoparticles have same chemical composition as its bulk material. They are produced by different methods of nanotechnology. When used as medicines, generally they produce toxic effect, though atoms are continuing to make them non-toxic. In contrast, high potency homeopathic nanoparticles are nano-associates of water molecules. They are produced by the serial dilution process of homeopathy. Treatment by such homeomedicines are necessarily treatment by nano-associates and it is continuing for over two centuries. We really don't know the theory, but obviously they were nano-associates. It reminds me of, of uh, the story of this Molière's drama. There was a character in Molière, one of Molière's drama, who was searching for, uh, who was trying to know what is prose. What is prose? Finally, he was surprised to know that throughout his life, he was speaking in prose. Similar is our surprise that for 200 years, for two centuries, we are using homeopathic, potentized homeopathic medicines, and now they are recognized to be nano-associates of water molecules. Modern nano of homeopathy these are the results of our investigations and investigations of other scientists. They are solid specific structures generated and transformed through serial dilution followed by succussion in presence of electromagnetic field. Presence of electromagnetic field is very, very important. That without electromagnetic field, we cannot have this nano species. That is convincingly established by Professor Konovalon convincingly established by the Nobel laureate Luke Montagnier that if the substance is sealed in a permalloy container so that no electric or magnetic field can permeate, penetrate the substance, then that formation does not occur. So electromagnetic field is a necessity. Ambient electromagnetic field is sufficient for that purpose. Now, following quantum electrodynamics, Nano-associates of homeopathy are coherent domains within bulk water. This is a breakthrough work by Guedes, who demonstrated theoretically and experimentally that water at room temperature contains ice-like structures, just ice-like structures. And they are stable structures, and they call it coherent domains. So they are very stable and they are the carriers of the information of homeopathic medicine through the different stages of serial dilution. And whatever memory of water, there is a lot of commotion over this concept of Ben Benesco in 1988. Is there some, our question is, is there some Material image of solute in water which is conserved 
and translated by dilution without changing. Present day scientists deny it. The answer to such question is no. In reality, information about solute exists, not the impression in the gross sense of the term, but an information about the solute exists and it is transformed through serial dilution. Nano associates are reflections of such transformation. And it is evident from the clinical results also that you will find that sometimes low potency, action of low potency medicines is different from action of high potency medicines. For example, Silesia low potency medicine has one kind of action, but Silesia higher potency has another kind of action. Now, coming to the second part of the question, which is bothering most of the scientists, how nano associates interact with bio Facts are template principles in biologic metabolic process is an established fact. It is also an established fact that biomolecules are deformed when there is its gene. And associated with that, the cell water also loses its structure. Again, action of antibiotics is through structural locking. So all these add up to a strong possibility of matching structures becoming medicine. So my concept is structural concept, not chemical concept. They point to a new concept of medicine, namely the structural concept, as stated below. A substance is to be recognized as a medicine if it has the capability of curing diseases, while its medicinal property is to be attributed to molecular structure of vehicle-like water or of distinct chemical substance when it exists. This definition tries to settle the question of what is medicine. Common concept is every medicine must have some chemical identity of its own, some specific chemical formula associated with each medicine. Then homeopathic high potency medicines cannot be considered as medicine. But if you look at the results, if you go by the concept that if a substance is capable of curing a disease, you must accept that it is a medicine. So it accommodates that. Now, coming to the other aspect, homeopathy is trouble safe, no side effect. In many cases, it has been found to be superior to conventional treatment. Most of the homeopaths will tell you a, a number of stories about these things. Still, it remains the most economic system of medicine. I don't know whether you have, any of you have calculated the cost, a 38 points with a 38 points of medicine, you can have as many as 25 doses for just one rupee. So, why it is of homeopathy will promise better health care in a most economic way. Now, I used to inform the audience here that this presentation is largely based on a paper which I published in 2016, Homeopathic Challenge, addressed by some striking facts and research findings, culminates in a generalized concept of medicine. This was published in Medical Open Access Journal of Proteomics and Bioinformatics. Now, conclusions are last one. This model is free from obsession with the distinct chemical identity of medicine. Medicines are to be characterized by their physical structure. So, Avogadro limit is no limit then. This resolves the age old conflict between homeopathy and non homeopathy because structural concepts is brought in here to resolve that conflict. Then, this structural concept, this is my last paper published only a few days back, the structural concept of medicine supported by quantum electrodynamics scientifically interprets ten simple substances. Those of you who are homeopaths, you know that the homeopathic philosophy is based, is based on Kent's philosophy, simple substances, but there is, till now there is no scientific basis of the simple substances. This paper interprets this on the basis of the structural model. That's all. Thank you very much for your.